Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for July 1st, 2021. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense Podcast. This week we will be joined with a new co-host and we will be discussing password managers and a new exploit that are affecting gamers with free games. So let's begin. So what, what I want to talk to you about today is the uh, importance of uh, password management tools. Uh, things like uh, LastPass, Bitwarden, etc. Um, because back in the early days of the internet when we used to have a couple of accounts and not everything was online. Uh, we didn't need to have anything to manage that for us. And when the internet evolved, we kind of failed to evolve with it. We started using one password for everything. You find one password that you like and um, you use it for your email account, for your, for your, uh, they're your bank account for, for your medical records. And the problem is, even if you use a very strong password, and the definition of a strong password is a passphrase, really, something that you'll re- it's, you can remember easily um, that will in- include you know as many things, as many different characters as you can, because there are many techniques out there that a hacker can use to crack those passwords, even if they have... Um, numbers and and, and, and and different letters and caps and small case um, so a hacker can use a rainbow table to uh, completely brute force that password it's not a uh, it's not something that is done uh, that's it's something that's something that's very time consuming it wouldn't be the first thing I would do but the thing is let's say a hacker attacks a company that you use Facebook, we just heard about LinkedIn yesterday, the day before, almost a billion people lost their credential or got their credential stolen. Um, and what happens, what happens after a, a leak like that is the attacker will get all that information and they will put on the dark web and they will get people to buy it from them, whoever the highest bidder is. One of the things as a hacker I can do is I can get your username and password that you use for LinkedIn, and 90% of the time, it'll be the same password you use for your bank account. Now, how would you feel about that? If, yeah. if you know, something that's very unrelated. So the best way to protect yourself from something like this is using a password manager. What a password manager does is it can, um, it's, 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 it's a locker where you put all your passwords in and the best thing about it is you don't have to figure out those passwords. It will create those passwords for you. And there's even uh, extensions that will automatically know when you have to enter in your password and it'll pop up. It'll ask you to put in your master password and it'll populate uh, your password in that field. Now, you can tell me, well, I have that on my browser. I use it on my Safari. I use it on my uh, linked to all my Google, you know, all my Google accounts are linked. My Firefox accounts uh, are all linked. Yeah. And when I type in, I go to gmail.com and I populate, say, hey, you want me to populate your password for you? Great. It makes it easy. It's better than having one password. But the only, the drawback to that is a hacker can come in and you can just unwittingly uh, go to a website that you think is legitimate. And what that attacker can do is he can put something that's called a beef hook on that website. And they have everything that your browser holds, all your history, all your session cookies, all your passwords, all your usernames. So it is highly recommended to not use that and use an, an independent password manager. And what a password manager does is, you know, it'll automatically populate that password for you. And it, it doesn't even it's not a copy and paste. So that information is not copied and pasted. So if anyone gets in your computer, they can't steal that information. All those passwords are hashed. And the way they're input in your in, in your password fields is it's actually kind of as if you're typing it. It comes as an input from the, the keyboard. It's not copied and pasted. So that's very important. Um, 
one of the one of the things that also attackers rely on other than using uh, the same password at different sites is using uh, very common passwords like passwords or some people think let me change the o and put it as a zero well this is very easy we can very easily circumvent that and get around it and get into your uh your information and once your information is out if i have one piece of information on somebody any novice social engineer can get almost 100 percent information about you i don't need to know who you are i can just find out who your who your friends and family are and then i can take that thread of information and follow it to get to have all the information about you and now what is that information worth yeah a credit you know for example one credit card on the dark web is worth a hundred dollars and i'm pretty sure your social security number and your username and password is worth a lot more than that because how many credit yeah. cards can i get with that um just just in 20 2020 2021 alone we had uh, linkedin leaked 700 million people that lost their credentials yeah in uh 2021 facebook and back in april 2021 so only two months ago mm -hmm. 500 million facebook users uh, uh lost their you know their credentials were given up so how many times how many websites are you using the same username and password that you're using on facebook yeah. that you're using on those other websites and mm -hmm. that's and that's uh that's a problem there um the the one of the, the from from my experience i remember i did an art i read an article about this uh i think it was last year somewhere and um there were i remember there was an art there was some the, the volume of data that was found from one breach was 87 gigabytes. Now, 87 gigabytes, if you ask me, that's that's a lot. But what makes yeah. it even more is that it was 87 gigabytes of username and passwords. So that was a text file mm -hmm. that was just with value pairs with usernames and passwords. And now you ask me, well, whose fault is it? Is it the fault of the company that allowed my information to be stolen? Or is it my fault for not securing myself i'm not using different passwords for every for every account yeah. uh the, the most important thing is, is education we need to educate everybody now that you know almost most of the working population is working remotely and if you're not working remotely most of your fun stuff that you do online you do um it, you do online you're you know your 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 banking your your social media everything your medical records your your grocery shopping your transportation your maps everything so do yourself a favor get a password manager and there's a lot of free password managers online uh bitwarden is my favorite one because the uh, uh they encrypt everything and they do not share yeah. your information with anybody. Okay. um yeah that's 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 pretty much it yeah, and to add on to what you said, there's actually some big files of different data breaches that have usernames and passwords that are being circulated for free on the dark web. So think oh, about yes. yeah, think about the uh, the big credit unions that got hacked. A lot of data was in there. Right. Another thing that hackers like to do is they would also kind of give you little emails to saying, hey, your account has been uh, hacked into, click this link that's not related to the account that you're going to. And then once you give them that your password, then they'll use it on every other site that they can find. Yep. That's another way they do it. But, yep. And you can even go to a, a website called Have I Been Pwned? To yep. check to see if your webs if your password has been exposed to, and it'll tell you which data breaches it actually was exposed to. So that's a good way to test your password to see. Okay, is it out there for everyone to see? If it is, definitely change it. If it's not, I'd still recommend changing it to a stronger password using the password manager like Bitwarden. Um, right. The like touching on what you're saying about the browser, the problem with Another problem with that is they don't encrypt the passwords in there. Mm -hmm. All of them are in plain text. So anyone who has access to your Chrome or Firefox or whatever could also have 
access to all your passwords in there too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And if you are looking at a password manager, also kind of look at the quality of the password manager because not all password managers are equal. Some of the free ones, like you said, don't encrypt and like Bitwarden, which I also use and recommend, does encrypt and is very strong and secure. So just make sure that the one that you're choosing is also has been tested by independent researchers to make sure that they're actually security. Right. Yep. So uh, it you mentioned what you, what you mentioned about the freely available passwords. That is that is just scary. Yeah. And. You know, if most of us now have Google accounts, and if you run a, a Google security check, it'll tell you how many passwords have been leaked. Yeah. So you really have no excuse. Now, I know it can be daunting to change all your passwords through your password manager all at once. I'm not saying do that. No, just and slowly do it at a time. Slowly do it as you need to. And, you know, you, yeah. there could be some accounts that have been dormant for years, and you don't even know that you have them. Don't worry about those. I mean, eventually get to them, but do the more sensitive ones now. Yeah, like the bank accounts and... The email right. accounts and things that are high value hackers. Right. Right. And another good feature about Bitwarden is they'll also monitor the dark web to see if it's been exposed to one of these data breaches. Right. Right. Yeah. And the best thing about using a long, complicated one is you don't have to change it unless it appears in a data breach because it's going to be long and complicated and it's not going to be easy to do a rainbow attack on it. Right. So I recommend with the password length is at least, at least 20 characters with uppercase, lowercase numbers and special characters. Right. What, what would you advise somebody who is, who is concerned about the length of passwords? Some websites will say, okay, you have, you make it no. eight to six characters I know sometimes you just have to do that but just make sure that even though if it is only eight characters make it as complicated as you can like if they allow you to do numbers and dashes and spaces and whatnot just do as many complicated things that you could put in there so it doesn't make it easier for the hackers to come in um, okay. But I've also noticed in security circles that a lot of these hackers know that many common passwords usually start with a letter. So you're actually more likely to be protected if you start your first character as like a special character or a number because they're more apt to go for the ones that start with digits and use dictionary attacks. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's that's, and that's just they 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 pay attention to human behavior. Look at yeah. all the passwords that you have, or all the mm -hmm. two passwords that you have for everything. They probably start with letters. Yeah, because if you look at the most common letters, all of them start with a letter. Even like Q W E R T is one of the most common passwords out there. Right. So hackers do pay attention to everything that you do, even if you think, "Oh, I'm just a nobody." Why would they pay attention to me? It's like, well, they learn from you. They may not right. get you, but they'll use that knowledge to get someone else. Right. One of the, uh, I tried to explain this to a friend of mine in the past. And one of the things is like, he said, he's like, why would, he's like, I'm willing to take those odds. I'm one of millions. And who cares if, you know, even if they have my password, how do you know they're going to go and go through the trouble of going through every single website that may be out there to test my, to test, see if my information works? Well, my, one of the things that, that you, some people may not be aware of is the power of uh, scripts. Yeah. Uh, they're not doing it by themselves. They're, they're not doing it by themselves. All the they're computer, doing is writing yep. a couple of lines, a script, and mm -hmm. it uses all your information and the information of everybody else on all these websites. And whatever ones they hit is the ones they target. Yep. So that's, um, yeah, everybody needs to be aware of this. Behave as if they have a target on their back. Yeah. Simple as that.
because the most secure thing to do is to be a little bit paranoid and say, okay, I right. can be a target. Right. But not go so far as saying, I am a target. Just be aware of your surroundings more than just saying, oh, I'm just a little fish. No one's going to pay attention to me. It's like, no, they right. will if there's enough money behind it. Yeah. And what's, what's it, to you, if you lose $1,000, I mean, it may sting a little bit. Mm -hmm. To others, it may sting a lot. But remember, that $1,000 that you're giving up to this one guy, to him, it's a lot of money. Because yeah. most of these guys are state actors and they're in areas where the dollar is worth a lot. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't care about your own money, you're actually empowering the criminals by not being diligent about your own safety and security online. Well, not only that, but they may take you for a thousand dollars and someone else for a thousand dollars and someone else for a thousand dollars and it adds right. up to like millions of dollars from right. multiple targets taking thousand dollars each. Right. So right. there's another incentive right there. Um, I just saw it, you know, how, how Google listens to you and mm -hmm. all that. Um, I read this like in, in the next four years, the next four years, the cyber attacks will increase by 35 times. And it'll cost about eleven trillion dollars. Yeah. Trillion. Eleven trillion dollars. Now, yeah. where is that money coming out of? Is it your pocket or my pocket? You know? And that's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of investment that people need to put into. Whether yep. it's businesses or us personally. Yep. Yeah. And I'd rather have it come out of someone else's pocket than my pocket. <laughs> so yeah. All right. All right. You want to move on to the the crypto one? Yep. We're we'll move on to the crypto one. Okay. So there is an article out there that talks about some hackers who. Uh, created these online forums to distribute free games or entice people to give up, give free games. The games in question were Grand Theft Auto 5 and let me see the other one. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V, NBA 2K19, and Pro Evolution Soccer. They're very popular games. Yeah, very popular games. And most of the people, it seems to be affected, are in the Brazil, India, and Philippines. But it also says that Americans have been targeted also. Um, so around 220 worldwide users have their systems infected with this malware so what does this malware do this malware right now all it does is uh, creates a cryptocurrency mining software so what that does is it uses your computer to create a or compute a hash to, in order for the hackers to gain money through this cryptocurrency like uh, Bitcoin or Doge or other cryptocurrencies you've heard in the news, which is basically like digital money. And the hackers really like this because it's a lot harder to track down digital money than it is real money. And so far, they've made almost two million dollars so far so this is a lot of money that they're making off of these people just from those three games yeah just those three games and it seems like a lot of them came from uh, people trying to pirate the games but i also suspect that this could also have a small section of people who are getting scammed through the hackers creating uh, spoofed websites to different uh, gaming platforms like Epic Store. I know that Grand Theft Auto 5 at one point was giving out a free copy of the Grand Theft Auto 5. 
in their store. So what could have happened was these hackers created a site that looks really similar to the Epic Store and say, okay, click here, download this for free. And then when he downloaded it, it actually had malware with it too. So it's also important to make sure that the sites that you go to are actually the legitimate sites and not some spoof sites. Some of the things you can look out for are the URL because sometimes they will change it just enough to where if you glance at it you say okay it's the epic store but if you really look at it like the e is a different funny character and it's like whoa what, what what's that and so it's very important to look at these details and also another thing is the language they use sometimes it could be in broken english and if that's a sign there like oh whoa, whoa, whoa. don't go through that site um also, sometimes some of their graphics may look a little like uh, downgraded and not so clear. It's also a good indication that it could be a cloned site because a professional company is not going to make their graphics look crappy, basically. Um, you know, one of just to kind of add to that that there is a very, a very simple tool in, uh, in, in Canada Linux. When we say tool in cybersecurity, you're talking about, you know, it's a piece of software yeah. that can clone a website. It will look identical to what you're used to. It, yeah. it, that's what it is. It's a clone of the website. So you won't see any graphical changes. You won't see any font changes. You won't see any grammatical errors. You won't see any of that. But, but what you said, check the URL. Yeah. 95% of the time, we don't look at the URL. If the page looks nope. like Facebook, I'm gonna put in my password. Yep. And guess what happens when you, as soon as you input that password, I'm sitting on the other end and I'm listening. I'm opening a port to your computer and I'm listening. Mm -hmm. As soon as you input that password. They got you. I got you. What, ha what, what will happen is, is, and it's very simple. It's three lines of code. You input your password. What happens is, the screen blinks. They're like, oh, maybe I fat fingered it. I didn't put the password in correctly. Mm -hmm. When the screen blinks, guess what happens? If you look at the URL, that's actually the Facebook URL. Yep. So I got in. Now I put it again. I'm on Facebook. I go to sleep, everything. I don't think anything of it. Meanwhile, there's somebody that has all my information. Mm -hmm. And you can use that information to now traverse, you know, you all the other yep. websites. Another side about, this also ties into, uh, Password managers also, because if you're using a password manager and you use the auto fill in feature, it won't fill in if you're on a different site than what you put in. Say, say, right. okay, really I'm good creating this password for Facebook.com. So if you're going into a URL that's not Facebook.com, it will not put in your password. Then it also give you a sign. Oh, wait a minute, this isn't Facebook if it's not auto populating my password. Right. That's a very good point, yes. Yeah. Now, let me ask, why would I care if somebody's making some crypto where it's not costing me anything, or is it? Well, right now, the only thing that's costing you is a slower computer, but mm -hmm. because they also have access to your system, what's gonna, t what's gonna stop them from putting in other malware like uh, ransomware or Keyboard. stealing whatever, data that you have on there say you have your computer has tax forms on there well right. I, I can get that oh look, your tax form has your social security number on. oh i got that too so it's right. just right now it's it's crypto mining but tomorrow they may change their mind and do ransomware or steal your da data a little bit at a time to see how much they can get yeah because if you have the ability to install a type of uh, crypto mining software you're able to sell like a backdoor you yeah. know at the same time so why not yeah yeah okay okay um so so we said to protect ourselves from this check the url of every website mm -hmm. don't click on a link that you don't know nope. uh, if you get an email from your bank and it says hey log yeah. into Citibank," don't just click on the url yeah. actually yeah. type Type it up there in the address bar. Mm -hmm. um, don't download games from or any application from unknown sources. Sources, yeah, especially uh, pirated ones. Especially pirated. 
Um, it, and you know, it's it, the thing is, it's it's so easy to go online now and find any type of software for free, or even movies uh, or anything like this. Could have been tied into a movie file too. Yep, yep, anything. It, it can, it can yep. be put in pictures. You can yep. you can you know, call sonography, and you put it or you or you embed something in a picture, and you can mm -hmm. as soon as you download that picture, even open it. Yeah, like once you open there, it, it back behind the scenes, it just yep done installs everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yep. And that will conclude this week in Simple Cyber Defense podcast. I want to thank our co-host and the listeners for everything, and we look forward to hearing the next episode. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.